Good afternoon. What's going on there, guys? It is the Earthmaster here on this Wednesday, October 5th, 2022 date. It is about 11.53 a.m. California time. Technically still morning out here. Latest quake uh, looks like a 2.4 earthquake out around the Oklahoma area. Latest quake there on the Earthquake 3D globe. A little bit of activity to talk about over the last 24 hours and last night. Seen some movement up here around the Yellowstone area, kicking up in a pretty good swarm of activity. Uh, a little bit closer here to the Caldera region. Um, looks like we had a uh, about 30 earthquakes or so overnight. And most of those were in just a very short time frame. I'll show you that here on the graph in just a second. Largest magnitude looks to be uh, probably a 2.5 there in that mix. Uh, a couple other low grade twos as well, roughly down there about five to seven kilometers below the surface. 30 earthquakes or so. Looking at the graph here, this is the last 24 hours on the UTC daily schedule. Uh, last night's time frame would be roughly within this sequence right here. So whenever I see something like this, I, I always see a bunch of earthquakes, a rapid type uh, earthquake movement event, so to speak. Um, and that kicked off roughly oh, overnight time frame. I'm, I'm trying to figure out if there's more than 30 earthquakes in this mix. And uh, so far the USGS only shown about 30 of them. It looks like it was centered right around the Caldera region up here around Mary Lake. Of course, we have had a pretty good swarm of earthquake activity over the last month uh, off and on activity, mostly light, moder or, uh, light earthquake activity. A lot of microquakes up here around the northwest corner of the park. But this event stirred up right at the caldera, kind of around this bend area. You can kind of see it behind this image. It's going to be this darker line indicating the Yellowstone caldera. And uh, this activity last night kicking up right at the uh, kind of the northwestern edge. And there's a lot of earthquakes in here in a short amount of time. Uh, it's just a lot. Bam, bam, bam. I can't even think of the word for it. It's kind of like a machine gun of of earthquakes so to speak and it lasted for it looks like for a few minutes or so and uh continued looks like off and on throughout the rest of the night in the morning and up until this time frame this afternoon we're still seeing some earthquake activity but uh, there's definitely a lot more than 30 earthquakes going on and this is a migrational uh, movement of this swarming again i i mentioned how most of the swarming has been confined here around this area but it looks like that area starting to shift more down this way here around the Mary Lake region where it looks like that's the epicenter of this new earthquake swarming. Notice on the graph here, I'm gonna show you guys what I mean. Mary Lake down here, notice these spikes indicated on the graph here over the last couple hours. Pretty well defined, pretty well spiky. Very easy to decipher on terms of uh, magnitudes if you know what you're looking at. And then when you go over here, where our normal swarming area was over the last couple weeks those those little spikes are much smaller or not even existent here on this graph so uh, that's a way to kind of decipher where the uh, Yellowstone swarm is as far as location goes notice that it's much more prominent here around that station than it is around the northwestern corner of the park now so new swarm new location and uh, it kicked off in a pretty big fashion last night Again, USGS only showing, uh, at least specifically for this area, about 22 earthquakes. The largest one, a 2.5 so far. And that swarming is continuing uh, as we speak. All right, West Coast activity. Uh, looks like a little bit of movement kicking up uh, outside of Mount Lassen again. We have been looking at some microquake activity here over the last couple days around Mount Lassen. Zoom in here and see i've oh, got a little separate swarm down here a ways away from lassen about maybe five miles or so uh, north of chester area but this other swarm we've seen here last week was uh really close to the mount lassen area we've seen about uh about 11 earthquakes or so nothing big but it was kind of peeking up there around the peak or kicking up around the peak i should say Let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone overview, or uh, Mount Lassen overview. Hopefully I didn't say Yellowstone here. I've got Yellowstone on my mind. <laughs> Mount Lassen area. 
Let's see here. Let me bring it up here real quick. There we go. Lassen Volcanic Center. Uh, here is GPS measurements and whatnot. The volcano is still in the green, meaning that normal conditions are prevailing. Seismograph stations here will give us an indicator of what's going on. There's not a whole lot of earthquake activity uh, noted today. Looks like maybe one little spike there and some other smaller ones within the region, but uh, nothing major going on there with the raw data coming from the Mount Lassen area. Uh, let's go back to the all magnitudes one day. Uh, low activity outside of Shasta as well, south of there, north of Mount, north of uh, Shasta Lake, uh, the Bay Area. A little spotty activity around the region today. Did have a three-pointer kick up here. I believe this originally came in as a 3.2. Uh, that one coming in last night, right up against the uh, foothills here outside of Merced, um, northeast of the Chowchilla area. It's movement up around the Long Valley Super Volcano as well, mostly some microquakes. Uh, further down south, it becomes a little spotty here, north of the Garlock Fault Shear Zone in Southern California. And it looks like a typical day down there. Not a whole lot of uh, swarming going on. Got one earthquake off here on the San Diego Trough, 2.0. Most of the activity confined here to the San Jacinto Fault Zone today. Uh, there's an earthquake out in Oklahoma, 2.4. Looks, looks like a very shallow earthquake. We've seen a little bit of swarming in this region. Uh, over the last seven days or so. I believe this is out in some oil fields, but uh, just for verification, let's go ahead and check it up, check it out. Uh, not for sure what this is. I remember looking at this map uh, recently. It's kind of hard to say exactly what these buildings are, uh, but this earthquake that struck is very shallow. Uh, it seems to be around that pond area. Uh, but noticeably nearby, there's definitely some fracking op or uh, some oil pumping operations. It's going to be these square boxes out here. Those look like they're, I don't know if they're in operation or not. Uh, but there's definitely some within the area of this little earthquake swarm that's kicking up. And I'm not for sure what this place is. If anyone knows out there, uh, let me know in the comments below. This is just uh, uh, northwest of Minco or uh, northeast of the region, Minco area in Tuttle, Union City area. So let me know if you guys know what's going on out there. Aside from that, eastern portion of the country, pretty quiet, folks. Puerto Rico, a little bit of activity, but nothing spectacular. Same for about the South America region. Uh, up here in Alaska, getting in on quite a bit of activity here, getting a noticeable increase in 2.5 and above. Seen a 4.5. Uh, well, this is on the BC or uh, Canada side. Also, another 4.5 in the Cook Inlet area. A couple other twos and threes scattered about, and a lot of microquakes uh, kicking up in that region as well. Definitely keep an eye up there north. Big Island of Hawaii, before I end up skipping this completely. Uh, still seen some swarming up there around Mauna Loa. It's uh, just an ongoing swarm here for a few days. Uh, total tally of earthquakes around the Mauna Loa areas. Uh, it's getting up there. Looks like about 220 earthquakes at Mauna Loa in the last week. Uh, let's bring up the largest magnitude, which lo looks like a 3.5. couple other threes in there as well. Um, let me take a look here and see if we've had an update far as the hands notification system, hazard notification system here uh, from the HVO. And doesn't look like it. Uh, Kilauea daily update. I don't see anything yet on Mauna Loa. We're waiting for the weekly update. See what uh, see what they have to say about this ongoing earthquake swarm. All right, not a whole lot going on further west though, folks. A little scattered activity. 5.1 in Indonesia. Of course, we had a, a um, 5.6 in the Iran area. This one coming in late afternoon time frame. Also down here in the South Sandwich Islands area, seen a 5.3. And uh, aside from that, uh, man, just a little spotty activity, but uh, with this ongoing swarm, I would definitely watch the Northwestern, uh, or at least the North American plate here against the West Coast. A lot of times these earthquake swarms inland, even Yellowstone, uh, can kind of give a good indicator of what's kind of being crunched out here along the North American plate. And right now, 
Uh, got my eyes on the Alaska region and the West Coast area. Earthquakes Canada map here has had some earthquake activity uh, at the northern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. There's that uh, 5.1 that kicked up. Looks like that was uh, overnight time frame. Bring up the plate boundaries here and kind of show you guys up against the... Uh, well, this is a Pacific plate and the North American plate boundary here uh, off the coast in the region here of the village of Queen Charlotte, B.C. area. Seen a 3.7. And further down here, we've seen some back building uh, up against the Juan de Fuca plate and the Pacific plate boundary. But in this case, if you want to be specific, it's the Explorer plate, a very small fraction of this um, en entire little plate here, which is still just a micro plate in itself. A lot of people just call it the Juan de Fuca plate, but there's actually uh, about three separate plates here, the Explorer plate, the Juan de Fuca plate here in the middle, the bigger of the three, and then down here you got the Gorda plate, all being shoved underneath the North American plate throughout uh, time. And that will continue to happen uh, and it will be building up the next mega quake here for the folks in the Pacific Northwest and the BC area. But there have definitely been some activity kicking up there today or uh, over the last couple days it looks like in that region. Solarham.net site. No more X flares yet. Uh, we still have a, a probability of that X flare being produced about 30% chance. 70% uh, chance for an M flare, 99% certainty for a C flare. Current conditions here on the solar X-ray flux map, the one minute data still shows us popping and crackling and sizzling in the C flare category. Uh, I think it's just a matter of time before we see a, a significant flare. Uh, looking at the current data here, this is the most recent map. This major sunspot is getting lined up to take that uh, um, shot at us. Uh, with a uh, possible X flare, maybe subsequent CME. This is pretty well in range here and in location to be geo effective if anything were to pop off. Um, I think maybe tomorrow about this time it should be bullseye positioned, but uh, definitely we are in that zone where uh, if a major CME were to blast off, it could definitely give us a pretty good hit. And uh, that's probably about the only major sunspot that I'm worrying about right now as far as it producing any major flare. And it's huge. It's growing like crazy. There's still a lot of complex field, uh, magnetic field polarities here. Uh, very close positive negative uh, conjunction there. 311 or uh, 3112 and 3116 uh, uh, with some newer development around the eastern side of the limb kind of making this a uh, pretty complex and magnetic field here. Looking at the magnetic fields here as well, showing the, a lot of the black and the white indicated. Very close range there between those sunspots. Let's see, 3112 is still in the red zone, indicating that it does harbor a beta gamma delta class. These guys showing a 20% chance of an X flare and uh, whatnot, 85% chance for a C flare, 40% chance for an M flare. But uh, I think that's got a uh, pretty good potential. I think it's holding off until it gets right into view, and then uh, we'll see if we uh, can't get a Earth-directed X flare with a large subsequent CME. We'll definitely watch that pretty closely. Looking at uh, the current geomagnetic field and aurora forecast, things pretty minimal. I don't think these. Uh, I don't think that forecast played out as planned. As far as getting a G2 storm, heck, we only had one day or one night here of a G1 class storming. Uh, that forecast pretty much came to a flop. Of course, solar weather conditions, um, you know, kind of hard to forecast, right? But either way, uh, these guys, looks like they had a G1 class storm. And uh, looks like over the la next night or so, we could see elevated conditions. But uh, things tapering down here on the Aurora. KP index currently at 3. The current real-time solar wind stream data is pretty level. Uh, got a pretty solid connection there between the BZ and BT component of the interplanetary magnetic field. Density down there as well. Speed somewhat elevated around 500, but things look pretty stable here on the current real-time solar wind chart. All right, guys, have a good day. Enjoy your, um, well, Wednesday. <laughs> I don't know if anybody enjoys Wednesday or not. Kind of downhill, right, towards the weekend. I got uh, quite a bit of schoolwork and stuff I need to catch up on and do before I uh, end up uh, with a, uh, a B. B's not, not a bad grade, but I like to keep my grades up around the A, at least A minus field categories. Probably a good idea, right?
can never have too high of a grade. All right, guys, stay safe out there again. Uh, if you know what that place is out in Oklahoma, drop a line there in the comments below. And i um, kind of curious to see what's out there. Take care, folks. We'll catch you a little bit later on tonight with a complete, up complete update. Stay safe out there.